let's look a little bit more at this formula for the directional derivative and understand what that dot product is telling us uh, in terms of projections. So if you recall, the projection of V onto U, or rather the projection of V onto the line spanned by U, is given by V dot U over norm squared of U times U. So here, this is going to be a scalar. And this here is going to be a vector. So u is telling us uh, something about the direction, and v is telling us something about how long it is. Now, if u actually is a direction, so in other words, if u is a um, unit vector, then this just looks like v dot u times u. Right? Because that denominator over here just ends up being 1. OK. So <clears throat> this, so in, in this case, because this is the one that we'll be looking at, this first part here, this scalar, is the length. And then this, uh, this other part is just the direction. All right. So if we look at the um, projection of the gradient vector f of a onto a unit vector, so a direction, yeah, then this is going to be um, gradient f of a dotted with u times u, which implies that the length of the projection of the gradient onto that unit vector is just that scalar part at the beginning, grad f at a dotted with u, which is our directional derivative at a in direction u. And from the formula for the dot product, we see that this is also equal to um, magnitude of the gradient times magnitude of the unit vector times the cosine of the angle between them. That's a theorem about um, dot products, right? And so since, the, uh, since we're looking at the case when this is a unit vector, that term is just equal to 1. And we end up with the directional derivative of f being equal to magnitude of the gradient times the cosine of the angle between the gradient and the direction that you want to go in. Now let's just take a, a look at this expression in and of itself here. Um, this is going to be maximized when the cosine of theta is equal to, oh sorry, when the cosine of theta is equal to 1, which means when theta is equal to zero, which means then that the um, <coughs> uh, we're moving in a direction parallel to the gradient. And so back in the beginning, I told you that the gradient gives you the direction in which f is increasing the fastest, and now. This shows you exactly why that is true, because the, um, the directional derivative of f is going to be biggest when we move in a direction parallel to what's being, where, where the gradient itself is pointed. In other words, where theta is equal to 0. All right, so that's why, maybe I'll just write that. This gives the direction of most rapid increase of f. OK. And so remember, parallel means scalar multiple.
So uh, u being parallel to v means that u is a scalar multiple um, of v. It can be positive or negative, but it, it's just a number. Um, <clears throat> and from that, we see that the phrase u is the direction of fastest increase of f, this means that u looks like a scalar multiple of the gradient. Now, this is going to be super important in uh, which section? Not the next section, but I think the one after. Lagrange multipliers. It'll help us understand how to maximize a function under a given constraint. So we'll come back to this idea definitely um, in the future. For now, um, <clears throat> I want to recall something else. And that is that using this uh, same dot product formula given in terms of product of magnitudes times cosine of the angle between them, this also shows that a dot b equals zero is the condition for a being orthogonal to b because that indicates that they have a 90 degree angle between them because the only way that um, this expression is zero is when this part of it is equal to zero which happens precisely uh, for theta equal to pi over two Okay, so the directional derivative of f at a being equal to zero means exactly that the gradient of f at this location is orthogonal to u. So in other words, you're moving in a direction orthogonal to the gradient if you don't want the function value to change. So this means the same thing as saying that f is constant in the direction u, right? Because the directional derivative is not changing. And geometrically, that means that u is tangent to a level curve. Oops. Of f at a. Let me show you what I mean with a picture. Okay, so here we have now uh, a plot of some, some function as a 3D graph, and then I've also got the contour plot so that you can see the level curves looking, uh, sorry, that correspond to this particular function. Now, suppose we're at some location right here, kind of in between. So the gradient is pointing this direction, and the, the negative of the gradient would be pointing that direction. And here, I'll just sketch in uh, in blue uh, some, some gradient vectors. Like, if I were to evaluate the gradient here, it would point this way. If I were to evaluate the gradient here, it would point this way. If I were to evaluate the gradient here, it would point this way. And so you can see that they're pointing towards, uh, they're pointing in the direction that would take you to the top of this hill right here and away from uh, the bottom of these valleys over here. And they're not always optimal. Like, they're, they're, they tell you which way to go to get up the hill as fast as possible from your current location, but that might actually end up being a dumb move in the long run. So for instance, if, if I were, um, right, uh, let's see what's a good idea, like maybe here, right? So the gradient would be pointing this way, which is not going directly toward the top of the hill over here. So it's kind of inefficient, but whatever. If I'm a little tiny ant and all I can see is inside that little ball, my best guess is to follow the direction of the red arrow. Okay, so what I want you to see about all these arrows here is, is hopefully the, the thing is that you notice is that they're all perpendicular 
to the level curve. So, so right here, there should, if, if I look at the tangent to the level curve, it should be at a right angle. And that should be the case at any of these pictures that I've drawn. The tangent to the level curve should be orthogonal to the arrow that I drew before. And so that's what I meant in this discussion just above. So when I say that the directional derivative is zero corresponds to the direction being orthogonal to the gradient, then that means exactly the same thing as u saying u is tangent to a level curve of f. So, so that language is spelling out what we see in this picture here. And <clears throat> if we look at the thing I was saying before about the, um, uh, the gradient as a projection, here, let me, uh, let me erase all this stuff now that I've made this fine picture all muddy. Um, let's do the same thing again. So, so here, so we'll look at this and suppose, so the gradient is gonna be pointing this direction right here. Now suppose we do a directional derivative and we move in this direction. How fast is the function going to be increasing? Well, instead of increasing at a rate cor corresponding to the length of this purple vector right here, um, we're going to look at the projection onto this line. That's a right angle right there. And the rate at which uh, the function value is increasing is gonna be the length of this line here, which is much shorter than that one, right? And if I were to take some other direction like this, then we would have to look at the projection onto this line, and that would be much shorter still, right? So it would probably be like this. And then if we go all the way and take something which is tangent to the level curve, wow, okay, that was a terrible, let me sketch it a little better. Boom, okay, so that's tangent to the level curve. Now this is orthogonal to the purple guy, and so the length of the projection of the purple onto the red is going to be zero. And I, I could also do things going in the other direction, right? So uh, let's get rid of all the, oh, I deleted my pretty vector. Okay, let's bring them back. Uh, there's my pretty vector. Okay, so there's the gradient. Um, let's see, now if, if I wanted to go in this direction here, so I take that to be my u, uh, then I'm going to um, have to project onto the neg a negative scalar multiple of this thing, so like that, and I would find this length here, and now that the length of right there is going to tell me the rate at which the value of the function is decreasing as I move in that direction. <clears throat> 